Ever since I started my job at Google, I couldn't make enough time to do everything for work, for this channel, for my newsletter, for my family. Everything was a trade-off. If I wanted to spend time with friends and family, I felt bad not working on the channel, not working on my newsletter. If I didn't make time to film, to write newsletters, it meant I had to wake up a lot earlier or I wasn't spending time with my family. Of course, I do block out time, but at the end of the workday, you're tired. Sometimes you don't follow it. And once you fall off the bandwagon, well, it's too late, right? What can you do about it? Surely I wasn't the only person at Google struggling with this, so I Googled how to make more time. And this is what I found. There are two specific three minute systems that really helped me structure my time and actually follow them. So let me show you what they are and how I use them. In the two by three system, there are two roles you have to play. The first one is the manager who looks at the big picture of your life. And the second one is the employee. So you are the doer in your life. I've got templates here. If you want to download them, find them on Gumroad. The link is in the description in the comments below. Now let's start with the big picture, being the manager of your own life. There are four quadrants and let's start with the first one, the priority. It's marked by a spy because it's exciting, it's high stakes, and sometimes you're in stealth mode for your project. It could be a side hustle that you're aiming to do for fire, or it could be a secret book you're writing but you're not telling anyone about. And you have to make time for it, right? Spies have a day job too, so it's a reminder to make time for your priority project. Now, you want to write down the tasks in this quadrant for the things you want to do in the next three days. And why three days? It sounds kind of arbitrary. There's actually a reason behind it, and I'll explain it in just a moment. Let me show you an example. For me, my priority project is my YouTube channel. And the things I want to do in three days are always the same, which is to script slash research the topics and then I want to film. So those are the things I want to do in three days. All right, this seemingly random three day window is actually the first reason why the system works. There's this awkward tension between how we want our day to work and how they actually turn out. We want to take off the to do's at the end of the day, but let's be honest, tasks have dependencies, people add to our list all the time. There are surprises, unexpected things that happen throughout the day. And in the end, it's almost never that easy to take off everything on our to-do list. But when the next day rolls over, we're ambitious and we have a new list of things that we need to or want to achieve. And so we are behind. So planning a three day window helps us do three things. The first one is protect our energy for our priorities. So we're not always rushing ourselves to finish something at the end of the day or worse, not getting to it in the end. The second reason is to build momentum. Once we're in the flow of things, we want to be able to do the next thing, but we need to be clear about what is the next step we need to do or else we like to procrastinate. So by building out the three day window, then we plan for when we finish one task, what will we move on to? So we purposely build in momentum and three, we just build in time for us to catch up when life happens. It's more beneficial to be realistic about life than to have this dream version and never achieve it and beat ourselves up for it. It's so important to note that for many of us, priority projects are actually not must do. Our lives can run without problem without doing any of these priority projects. And so it's really easy to procrastinate. And by building in time, by focusing on our priority, it helps us move these projects forward. Now let's move on to the must do's. This one has a clock icon because it's a reminder that these things actually take longer than we expect them to do. And we also must make sure they're done. So there's a balance here. Now this brings me to reason number two why this template works. It's because the priority project is separate from the must do's. This gives us a visual reminder that actually our priority is somewhere else. The must do's are things that other people usually throw at us. So when you see it visually, where you're spending time, how many tasks you have in each, then you know, am I being pulled in other people's direction or am I focusing on what I say is the priority of my life? It also gives us the chance to adjust and think about where we actually want to spend our time. Let me give you an example for must do projects. First for work, I need to uh, priority reach out. Um, there is the onboarding project. Uh, and then also for life, I need to go to the dentist and also uh, gym sign up. So already we can see that it seems like the priority projects actually have less to do. And usually this takes 
an hour and this takes an hour so that's two hours in three days which is not that much and for work these things probably take let's say five hours and for life it takes one hour max so already i know that i'm spending six hours on my to do must do's and only two hours on my priority project so i need to either think about how i can reduce um, the must do's or create more time for the youtube channel related um, tasks for example i can um, edit uh, refresh thumbnails and in this way so that probably adds another three hours in this way then i can adjust and visually think about okay am i giving myself enough tasks in one versus the other what changes do i need to make now the third quadrant we move on to the random to do's right these are you know picking up groceries or google why mangosteen is the queen of fruits this column exists so that throughout the day you can just dump whatever pops into your mind onto this page so it doesn't take up your mental memory this is reason number three why this template works because after all that planning our mind is trained to take a break and think about something random and distract itself with a novelty and some of them are really important and interesting so we want a system that captures these throughout the day now there's actually two ways to approach this random list of to-dos as david allen says if something takes two minutes to do then you might as well do it now because the mental space they occupy knowing that you have to do something but you haven't done it yet actually decreases our iq but the other thing is that by keeping a list and knowing that you have the list somewhere you'll get a chance to manage your time around the list and around all the priority and the must-dos. And because you have that three-day time frame to work with for all of these quadrants, then it's a lot easier to reduce the things that you don't have to do. For example, for my own business, I wrote down change the bank for uh, several reasons. And all I needed to do was take 30 seconds and print out uh, some of the invoices. But after three days, I still didn't do it. And I realized that this was just a nice to have. It didn't move the needle on anything. So I got rid of the task. Now the fourth quadrant is my addition, which is the fleeting note. As you probably know, I use Zettelkasten and Obsidian to organize my thoughts and turning inputs into outputs. And so throughout the day, I usually take my notes digitally, but this is more of a reminder and a physical space for me to write something down. One of the fleeting thoughts that came to my mind today was that statistically, apparently the West in a neighborhood is always more affluent than the East. And I wonder if it's got anything to do with wind direction or where the sun rises. I don't know, it's something for me to look up. So I would just write this down in the fleeting notes section. And if you don't know about Zettelkasten, make sure you check out this beginner's Zettelkasten video here. I highly recommend this note-taking system if you don't have one in place. All right, so that's being the manager of your life, looking at the big picture, planning ahead, putting a space in between so that you can focus on what matters. After the big picture, we gotta figure out the things we need to do on a day-to-day -day basis. So this is the daily plan. And the focus here is to get ourselves on the right track day after day so that we build strong habits and we get things done. Again, you can find this on Gumroad. The links are down below. And this is an adapted version from Professor Cal Newport, who I also talked about in my Atomic Notes video. He's seen so many students struggling with planning fallacies, struggling with procrastination, struggling with organizing their notes, their thoughts, their lives. So this planner focuses on helping us realize how much things actually take in a day. Then there's the actual section. So we track our time and see if we actually follow the plan because again, things happen in life. So we want to be aware of what's causing the distraction. Is it us and wanting to procrastinate? Is it other parts of our lives that we're not consciously building into our schedule? And by knowing that, we can better schedule our lives going forward. So there's a feedback loop built into this plan. It's a reminder that there is space to revise your schedule as you go. Now, of course, we want to link the big picture with the daily planner, right? The two has to be in sync in order for us to actually achieve what we planned. So there is a priority section where we are rewriting what our priorities are and breaking them down into tasks. Now with tasks, there are only three lines for other priority and three lines for other, because this is again, a reminder that we can't fit everything into our lives. So this, focuses our attention again it makes us look at our priorities and think okay what exactly is the most important thing i need to do right now and for others is again a reminder that it shouldn't take more than half of our time then there's the for tomorrow section so whatever doesn't get done still has 
a place to stay so we don't lose the things that we don't finish today we don't have to feel overwhelmed then of course there's a fleeting note section it doesn't mean you have to fill out the one in the three days it doesn't mean you have to fill out the one here but it's just a reminder track your fleeting thoughts these are really interesting and sometimes very important because as you know things are getting processed in our subconscious all the time so when something is processed you want to be able to capture all that hard work that your brain has done right then at the end of the day there is a space to reflect on things that you want to do less of and things that you want to do more of and i actually walk through this in more detail in my planning video for 2023 but the simple idea is that every action we take is a vote towards who we want to be so if there are things that we want to do less of then we want to keep track of them and see if we've done them every single day as a reminder and same if we want to change the direction and do more of something we want to be able to track that as well and just a note here even if you don't focus on doing more of something just by removing some of the bad habits or things that you don't want to do you're already better than who you were you know, yesterday or a year ago so via negativa a mental model i mentioned in this video is really powerful and all of this fits into the grand scheme of setting systems not goals uh, doing less not more and turning input into output so check out the planning video to see more about this and i'll see you in the next video bye